In this video, I'm going to show you how to paper mache. And in order to do that, you need some paper mache paste, and you'll need some strips of newspaper of varying sizes. And of course, you'll need an armature that's ready to be paper mache. So for this armature, I just created something out of crumpled up newspaper and tape. There's many ways to create an armature, but if you watch the first part of my trophy head videos, you'll figure out how I made this one. So let's get started. Uh, usually when we start paper macheing, generally we want to start with like the weaker areas first. So if you notice that there are any parts of your sculpture where the tape just doesn't want to stay down or things are a little weaker, like it might be coming off or possibly just a little wobbly and you want to strengthen that, that's a good spot to start. If everything is really sturdy, you can just start anywhere, maybe start with the larger areas first and then get smaller as you go. Um, so a couple of tips when you are working with your paper mache paste, you don't want to have too much paste on your hands, like if it's just dripping and making huge puddles of paste, then generally you have a bit too much. So you want to have enough paste to saturate the paper. So if we're using newspaper, it's going to get um, kind of transparent and that's going to tell you that it is ready to use. So it won't be crunchy anymore. It's not going to make wrinkly noises. It's going to be transparent and soft. It should tear easily once the paper is fully um, saturated. So if you do have too much paste on the paper, you can always just take your fingers and kind of squeeze the extra paste off of the paper. And once you do that, you'll just start wrapping the paper onto your sculpture and just trying to get everything to lay smoothly. So if you feel that you are getting lots of wrinkles on your paper, you might need a smaller piece of newspaper. If your newspaper is really saturated with paste, um, it's likely that you can kind of fold the paper over on itself to make it lay more flat. Once you start getting a fair amount of paste on your hands, then usually you aren't going to have to dip your hands in the paste every single time. So once I have enough of this paste on my hands, it's not going to be dripping because I don't have too much, but it's also just enough that I can kind of rub the paper back and forth between my hands and kind of rub the paste into the paper. So you'll see that once it's ready to go, it tears really easily. So if you need smaller pieces, you can start working that way. And when I lay my pieces down, I really want to overlap everything to make sure that it stays on and becomes one solid piece. Because if we just have random pieces of paper that aren't touching anything else, when it dries it's probably going to fall off. You can see how I also am wrapping my pieces onto the base in addition to the form of the creature, so that's going to help keep everything attached onto the base. When you start to get into areas that have kind of more curvy areas or, or hard corners or overlaps, um, generally you're going to have to start using smaller pieces of newspaper. So um, usually what I end up doing is just taking medium-sized pieces and then just tearing them down into strips. And I feel like the strips tend to work pretty well to fit into those curves without um, wrinkling so much. 
And then if you do have difficulty kind of laying everything flat into the area, um, you can always take another strip and go the opposite direction across what you just laid down. And that's going to help kind of push everything in so it stays down without creating any gaps or bubbles between the newspaper and your armature. So this mouth area is really curvy and I've used lots of relatively small pieces to go over the curves but I can still see areas that are kind of poking out so it's not quite as smooth as I'd like it to be. So at this point now that I've kind of laid down sort of a base here I'm going to go over it with even smaller pieces and be going in kind of like the opposite direction that everything is moving in here just to kind of flatten down those areas and make sure that it's extra smooth. So I'll move this as close as I can get it just to give you a better view of what's happening. So when we get to these really small pieces we want to make sure that our paper is extremely saturated. So the softer the paper is or the more saturated it is um, that's going to make it lay smoother on the armature. Um, that doesn't mean you need to have it dripping with paste because just because there's a lot of paste on it doesn't mean that the paper itself is saturated. So you have to make sure you rub the paste into the paper. So you can see how you can start to see my fingers through the newspaper. That's what we're looking for. So we want to get rid of all these sort of like white dots that are showing up here and make it totally translucent. One thing you'll want to do while you're working with paper mache is to always be on the lookout for areas where you might see your newspaper starting to lift up or get bubbles underneath it. And usually that's a sign of not having enough paste on it or not um, sort of pressing it down into the armature enough. So if you start to see any of those areas, um, first you can always just try smoothing it down with your fingers and a little bit of paste. Um, but if that doesn't do the job for you, then usually putting another strip over the piece um, going in sort of the opposite direction is usually going to be enough to keep the pieces of newspaper from coming up as they dry. So this also goes for whenever you see wrinkles or bumps or anything that is not you know, smooth the way you want it to be for your creature. As you're working, um, it's also important to make sure that you have more than one layer of paper mache. So um, generally when we work with this, we do anywhere between two and four layers. Usually three to four is, is best. Um, it's kind of hard to tell how many layers you put down if you're constantly overlapping, but usually you'll be able to tell once it's dry. Um, when the paper mache is dry, you'll know that you have enough coats um, when the sculpture is stiff. So it's no longer squishy, um, the paper covers everything, and it's, it's very firm. So uh, it, if you try to squeeze it, it's not going to have any give. It's not going to make any scary, crinkly noises. It's going to be very strong. And that is how you're going to know that you're ready to sort of finish and move on to painting and decorating.
I've let this dry overnight because I got a coat down um, and then generally what I have to do is get the backside. So when your stuff is wet you don't usually want to tip it over because the paper mache might stick to the table and then rip pieces off. So it's a good idea to do you know one side at a time. That way you don't have to worry about anything getting ripped off from drying and sticking to anything. Um, so you can see that some areas didn't really want to stay down too well and that's fine. Um, usually with the first coat we have some problems like that if there isn't enough paste or whatever reason um, if the paper's not saturated enough. So all I need to do to fix that is just put more layers over the top of it. Um, and as I had said earlier, you'll know when you have enough layers on when if you squish it, it's going to feel hard. Um, so mine's still a little crunchy, you can hear it. So, and just a little squishy still, so it's going to need a couple more coats to really make it ready to paint. Um, but what I'm going to do first is reach all of the places that I couldn't get to yesterday. So I'll just flip it over, find a good balance for it, and then work from there. I've added three coats of paper mache onto my sculpture at this point. And so now we can see that it is nice and firm. Everything is in place. There aren't any pieces of newspaper sticking up anywhere. So that tells us we're ready to move on. We can either start painting right now or begin adding other details to the sculpture. I'll be adding some paper clay to add texture and also a set of fake eyes and some eyelids created out of paper clay. If you wanted to add eyes to this and not use paper clay, you can always create eyelids or other sorts of um, forms around the eyes using just the newspaper and paper mache paste. So at this point, we're ready to move on.